So what is a prescribed fire? It means that we have a prescription of conditions where we are permitted to burn. And so we have to pick and choose our days based on the conditions, and that includes wind direction, wind speed, the temperature, so the high temperature of the day, the high and low relative humidities of the day, and there is an equation that we figure out how, how effectively is smoke going to move up into the atmosphere. Among the most biodiverse places in the world is the Southern Appalachians, and uh, one of the primary reasons for that um, historically is, um, is fire. Fire is one of the five major natural processes with landslides and ice storms and flooding and wind events that, that influence the forests in our natural areas. One of the plants, probably one of the most important ones, Hudsonia montana, it's mountain golden heather. Um, it has to have fire to, uh, to um, reproduce. Another species, table mountain pine, has serotonous pine cones. Who knows what serotonous means? Fire. Yeah, fire opens the cone and then the seed comes out so it can, so it can reproduce. And so it, it's just a perfect example of Mother Nature telling us that we've got to have fire in places uh, in the mountains. So that's our job. Why do we burn here at Lake James? And it's um, safety and health. For safety of the people, for our surrounding neighbors, and health of the ecosystem, health of the forest. A lot of our burns, our, our objective is hazard, you know, fuel reduction, try and get rid of the hazardous materials to prevent catastrophic wildfires from coming in and destroying the place. When you hear that term, good fire, I want you to kind of reframe your, in your mind what we're talking about is fire that helps keep people safe and helps keep the forest healthy. We work with NC State University, I work there in Raleigh, and we try and connect landowners with services they need to manage their forest land. A lot of prescribed burning and fire programs for our landowners. And so the first thing that happens is that the burn boss, the person who is in charge of all of the operations today, will gather their crew together and they're going to give a safety briefing and an informational briefing. Hey, I'm Thomas Craig again. I'm going to serve as the burn boss today. So today we're doing the good fire burn. So we're looking at this grassy area right here and then we're looking at the parking lot medians. So these are the areas that we're gonna burn. So let's ease on up there and watch them scratch this line in and then we'll go from there. Right. This is a pretty classic formation for creating a fire line, a hand line. What you'll have is you'll have a sawyer in front. The sawyer is the guy with the saw. He's cutting away small trees, branches, anything that's in the way of where we wanna lay this fire down. Behind him is a swamper. The swamper is the person who's removing all that debris as the crew moves down the hill. Behind that, we have fo folks with hand tools, rakes, hoes, pulaskis that are removing all of that organic material off of the pet that we're trying to create. And the last person is somebody who's wearing a backpack blower. The invention of backpack, backpack air blowers has revolutionized the way we fight fire. And the reason that we are seeing this flame is because we are in a fuel type, a grassy fuel type, that dries out very quickly. So this fire that he has lit with his crew is what we would call a backing fire. He has lit it from the top of the hill and it is creeping downhill. That is a very uh, desirable way to light because it gives us plenty of time. Fire moves slowly downhill, much more slowly than it does uphill. They are creating a safe area, a black area, where they started their fires, right? And now what they can do is they can bump down and in sections start fire and run it up to that black spot. But once it hits that black, the area that's already been burned, that's it. It's not going anywhere. 